Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I would also like to welcome you all to Bergen. And I would also like to say something about Bergen. Bergen is a city, uh, some 270,000 inhabitants. Out of them, more than 10%, some 30,000 people are students in the city. This is a university city. We have uh, university colleges, the university, a lot of business schools. Um, and also we have a very strong research environment in this city. Very strong with uh, several institutes. And we have the main uh, Norwegian Navy base in the city and also the Royal Norwegian Naval Academy, where I am trained. Well, uh, the first speaker today, Tor is trained, and also uh, retired Admiral Kjellberga Olsen, last, enough, uh, last name as me, was trained. So this is basically a maritime city. This is a city about the ocean. We use the ocean all year round. We go fishing, we go boating, we even go swimming in the cold water. Now I'm going to take you a little bit away from the sciences and move a little bit into the business part. I'm going to be talking about the Bergen subsea cluster, the Norwegian subsea technology. I'm going to talk about the global subsea markets. And finally, I touch into a subsea business case correlated to this conference. Starting with a film. Sound, please. The tease and collaboration becomes a necessity. Placed in the strict regulatory regime of the North Sea, fueled by cooperation and individual expertise, one of the world's leading collaborative efforts can be found on the west coast of Norway. The NCE Subsea Cluster. The cluster seeks to embody and enhance the pioneering subsea experience from the North Sea. The cluster contains competence from world-leading giants, together with smaller, more specialized companies. With over 125 partners and members, the subsea cluster delivers all over the world and is recognized as the world's leading environment for subsea aftermarket technology products and services. It is a subsea technology environment with its main focus on operation, maintenance and modifications with delivery of innovative and technically superior products. Framo Engineering has been the world's leading system supplier of subsea pump systems and flow meters for more than 20 years. Lately also a dominant market position for subsea compressors is being captured. Roxar, a business unit of Emerson Process Management, is a leading provider to the oil and gas for production optimization, production regularity, and improved decision making. The Radoy Group has developed and manufactured advanced steel structures for the oil, gas, and maritime industry, as well as the renewable sector, for more than 40 years. EPSIS provide hardware and software tools for integrated operations, simplifying collaborative work processes and improving the way the industry works. The industry cluster connected to NCE Subsea is a world-class competence and production environment. The member companies are highly motivated to cooperate and share information. It is a front-runner in development and innovation within most aspects of the demanding tasks in subsea solutions. Find your partner in business, R&D or education and training in the cluster representing the future of solutions.
Now, this is a picture of the Coast Center base, just outside of Bergen. We had a tour there yesterday. This is the biggest subsea aftermarket base in the world. Nowhere in the world you will find as much subsea oil and gas production equipment at one geographical place as you will find at this base. Now, this area is the global hub for subsea aftermarkets. Nowhere in the world you will find as much people, as much equipment, and as much energy put in to the subsea aftermarket as you will find in this region. I work as a cluster facilitator. I work in making the companies, the R&D institutions, the training institutions to work together, and we have business purposes. We are focusing on the capacity, the competitiveness, and the value creation of the individual companies and the cluster as a whole. So we make the companies work better together. These are members and partners of NC Subsea today, some 130 companies and organizations, ranging from the big Star Oil, the Norwegian oil company, through US-based FMC technologies, Arca Solutions, municipalities, uh, R&D institution, the Institute of Marine Research, and so on. We are also a part of uh, a focus program in Norway called the Norwegian Centers of Expertise, where the Norwegian government have appointed 12 regional clusters that are the most important, most innovative, most ambitious, and internationally focused regional clusters in Norway. We being one of them, appointed in 2006, there are 12 in total, some of them within oil and gas, some of them within other industries. Now going into the technology part. In Norway we have uh, a big strategy group um, composed by operators, government, uh, supply industry, and they do road mapping for the technology development of the future. And looking into this roadmap on technology gaps, we will see that uh, for the continued development of oil and gas industries, you will see need for development of power supply and distribution, subsea technology, automation and unmanned facilities, condition monitoring, sensor technology, flow modeling and flow assurance, integrity management and risk reduction, leak prevention and detection, and Arctic marine operations. Now, this is also what this conference is about. This is a part of the national strategy of Norway. We have followed up, made a summary of what the strategies are and what the main operators like Statoil and Petrobras out of Brazil think is the main challenges within subsea industry. So we produce this as a business case for the organizations within the cluster. And we have a lot of themes here that are important in order to develop the technology in the future. This is a slide showing Star Oil. And I must say, Star Oil, in my opinion, is the most innovative oil company in the world. You won't find any company that have put more technology into the ocean that Stadal have done. Very good company. Now, they made a path going to the Arctic. Started with a subsea to beach, snow, uh, snow it, uh, Ormen Lange, uh, in 2007, where you have, at, uh, for instance, at Ormen Lange, uh, outside mid of Norway, you will have a facility producing at 800 meters water depth, producing into a pipeline to a facility onshore. So what you would expect to see out there is a platform. There is none. It's on the seafloor, producing directly to shore, getting processed, getting directly into a new uh, export line, uh, going to Easington, UK, 600 kilometers. Moving on to subsea processing, Water injection in the reservoirs, 
Next step is the subsea compression. I'll get back to that. And then it's further step outs and going into the Arctic. This is the vision of Stadol. The uh, executive vice president for technology and projects, Margaret Devrum, she has a vision of having the complete subsea factory ready by 2020. All elements on the seafloor. And this is also a prerequisite for the oil and gas industry to go Arctic, to go on the ice. Here you will have a complete oil platform on the seafloor. And they are qualifying this technology now. What they are doing now is building subsea compressors. And these are the, this is the size of one of these compressors actually being built now, being installed to be operated in 2015 on the Orsgaard field. So this is a football stadium and this is the size of the compressor station. This is an, another one for the Ormond Lange project. I don't, you might see that there's actually a person standing on top here. These are huge structures getting into the ocean. Moving into the markets. This is a picture of a few years ago uh, showing by end of 2009 uh, the number of subsea wells being operated <coughs> around the world. And uh, the red number is the average age of the subsea wells. Now you can see that there is subsea activity all over the world. But you also see that the number of wells in the British and the Norwegian continental shelf is way beyond anywhere else. So actually, a lot of the subsea technology has been developed in this area, and especially on the Norwegian continental shelf. And the two major leading subsea operators in the world, they are Stadoil and Petrobras out of Brazil. They are really innovators of technology. Now you will see a lot of activity is also now going on in Gulf of Mexico, West of Africa, we will see East of Africa, and you will see from India down to Australia, Australia now being maybe the biggest subsea market in the world these days. We expect to see subsea or deep water activity globally in the years to come, all over the world. We will see it in, uh, of course, uh, British and Norwegian continental shelves, further going north. We will see Gulf of Mexico, we will see uh, Brazil, west of Africa. There will be some on east of Africa and a huge activity down in this region, ranging from uh, India down to Australia. And I don't know when, but it will be there in Russia. I think that technology being used in Russia in order to uh, exploit the resources will be developed in Norway first and then exported to Russia. That is my guess. Now looking into the global markets, this is a slide showing the uh, expected annual turnover, the market, market, total market globally uh, divided into different regions. Now, from 2002 until 2008, we had a very high growth in this market. Then came the financial crisis. Everything was put on hold, and now we're over here in this period. And we expect actually hyper growth. Now, uh, this is only, this is a year old, so it doesn't count any more than uh, 2017, and actually the numbers are even higher now. The last number I saw, in 2020, the global subsidy market will be 100 billion US dollars. Today it's 40. So until 2020, we will see an, an average annual growth of 11% in this uh, industry. Looking in the shorter term that we know from now to 2017, it will be 15% a year. One main challenge for us, is that the growth comes from this level. It doesn't come from this level. And already here in 2008, the industry was actually producing above their capacity. 
And we haven't seen a lot of more resources coming into the industry since 2008. So coping with getting access to enough qualified personnel to do processes better, that is the main challenge of the industry uh, in the years to come. The main challenge is not to develop the, the, the technology, because we have always been able to do that. And we'll continue to do so. Then moving a little bit into the business case. This started some years ago. Olav Rune from Institute of Marine Research, he made uh, this. Started on the idea on the integrated environmental surveillance. Now we connected a little bit into NC Subsea, and we made a study with these parties, made the study for us, on sensor technologies for integrated environmental monitoring. So we distributed this uh, to our members as a possible uh, business case. There are a lot of technology gaps here to be taken care of. Stardall has picked up on this. And of course, they see this as their mean of getting access to new and explored areas. And they're talking about integrated environmental surveillance as the paradigm shift from the expeditionary online, offline sampling to continuous environmental monitoring to get the license to operate demonstrated through prudent operations in sensitive areas. These are the main parts that they see of the integrated environment, environmental surveillance. They're working on this currently. There is an ongoing uh, project with uh, Kongsberg, IBM, DNV, managed by Stadol, uh, going from 2012 to 2014, looking at the business cases for several areas. The monitoring in challenging areas, covered with ice, activities restriction parts of the year, the sensitive areas, and condition monitoring on production leaks, which we don't have, of course, uh, the technical conditions, and the verified containment of injected fluid into the production system, uh, the reinjected water, and so on. So that sums up my presentation a little bit more into the business part and also looking at the connection between the sciences and industry on the environmental side, because this is a very important part also, of course, for the industry. So thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the week in Bergen.